look, are you planning to stay up tonight and watch the funeral? I'll be honest, I am not a huge funerals person. And the idea of standing up, uh, staying up to watch on terrestrial television uh, and with the greatest of respect, an elderly lady being buried in the family chapel just doesn't do it for me. Um, and I know people say it looks wonderful and look at all the flags and we wouldn't have this without the monarchy. It's all just pomp and circumstance. It is all bunting. It is all just window dressing. Um, oh, Carl says Carl is on standby for Brownie. No, Carl, we won't need you this morning. <laughs> well, not yet, Carl. Oh, that's hilarious. You're sitting there waiting. No, Carl, those things have got to be spontaneous. I'd ha hey. I hate to think that you're putting any any effort into it, uh, to be brutally frank. Um, geez, what I'm getting is absolutely no, I'll be honest, absolutely no enthusiasm for getting rid of the monarchy. And this is how it protects itself, the old firm. They know we are all feeling nostalgic. So at the very time we should be questioning the monarchy in the House of Windsor, They've almost preconditioned us to tug our forelocks and bend our knees even harder. So we have this orgy of nostalgia for, you know, Britannia and God save the Queen and everything else, and it completely stymies at the very point we should or could have a discussion about republicanism, it completely stymies that, completely stymies that. Have we tried texting him, Ben? Okay, well, apparently we're going to do Laura. That's fantastic. And Laura Clancy, of course, is our UK, or has become Laura, uh, our royal correspondent. And I love Laura as a royal correspondent because she is not, unlike most of the people you see on the television, some sort of, I don't know, bootlicker, some sort of royal bootlicker from TVNZ or TV3 or something. Sean, loved your bit on Countdown Wokeness. Uh, Countdown sending in the lawyers for putting them into disrepute. I'll contribute for legal fees. No, Dave, they are not. All right, we've 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 switched things around. Wayne Brown, who I don't know might be in the shower, but we're going to find out, aren't we, Ben, on pain of death. Um, so we're going to flick things around, and we were going to talk to, uh, well, I'm going to call her, she probably hates the title, our royal platform royal correspondent, Laura Clancy. Uh, we are talking to her in the UK now. Laura, thank you very, very much for joining us slightly early. No problem, and you, I love that title. You may call me that one. Oh, yo, so you're happy to be the platform's <laughs> royal correspondent. Yeah, well, I tell you what, it. half the television journalists in New Zealand seem to be somewhere on the embankment in London right now. We're getting wall-to-wall <laughs> -wall coverage of this thing. Is it I'm any sure, dif sure. any different in Britain, or is it the only story, the only game in town? Oh, it's been the only story pretty much all week, I would say, particularly on the BBC. Um, yet we haven't seen anything else, really, to be honest. And Laura, is it all, if you like, positive or adulatory? Um, yeah, so the BBC, I mean, we have, we've had the Queen lying in state, obviously, in Westminster Hall, and the BBC have had a 24-hour feed of that on. Um, so you can literally just watch that all day if you want, um, plus kind of ongoing commentary. And very little of that has been, um, well, most all of that really has been uh, positive. There's been yeah. very little... Um, kind of critical coverage, yeah. Yeah, and Laura, so English, the response to this, you form the longest queue in history. I know. <laughs> I know, it's quite incredible, isn't it, really? Um, um, have you been tempted to join the queue? Well, I would, I, I, just to be nosy, but it was so long, I decided not to. Um, but, I mean, the optics of it are really interesting, aren't they, in terms of, like, they could have had a ticketing system, right, that would have meant there wasn't a really long queue. Yeah. But I suppose, in a way, it's quite good for them to have it as though there's this big outpouring of, you know, grief that everyone has. So, very, down, very so. British. But I've heard stories there's been a sexual assault in, in the queue. There's been crime in the yeah. queue. There's been crime in the queue. There's been, uh, I think yesterday, there was something like over 100 um, uh, people had to be taken to hospital because um, they collapsed in the queue. It was cold. It was really cold overnight. It's autumn here now. Um, so I think, you know, there's been particularly people who have accessibility needs and stuff. I mean, it's impossible to stand for 24 hours for most people. Yeah. 
And David Beckham, and quite some discussion here, David Beckham doesn't Q-jump. I'm thinking, where is the spot where they're putting the Q-jumpers in, Laura? Because I would be pissed if I'd done 12 hours in the queue, and then Philip Schofield or someone sidles <laughs> in in front of me because some equerry says, I mean, that would be fisticuffs. I know. Well, there's been a lot of anger at Philip Schofield and a lot of love for David Beckham, um, which, again, I think is interesting kind of optics. Um but I suppose we all, I mean, we also need to ask the question, if you're mad at someone having unearned privilege to skip a queue, yeah. you're, all, you're, you're in a queue to view a coffin of one woman. Like, there's something that's not... Yeah, that's <laughs> not right. How are you going to get upset about grace and favour when you're queuing to support in an institution that is entirely based on grace and favour? Yeah, I mean, you're queuing for 24 hours to look at the coffin of, of yeah, exactly, one woman. So there's, there's, there's a disconnect there somewhere. Mm. Um, but it's also really interesting, and particularly David Beckham, like in terms of kind of the the flattening of the flattening of class relations that went on there. You know, he's one of us and all of this. Mm. So, uh, yeah, the people generally accept that was that was genuine. David Beckham. I mean, to be honest, I think sometimes I think the guy's so thick he didn't know he could jump the queue. Well, no, maybe not. And I don't know David Beckham, so I don't know what he's, what the logic was. Um, but it's it's been very good PR for him either way. So yeah, um, Laura, we have also had. Hear some stuttering debate, the starts of a debate about republicanism or, or constitutional reform. And I was just yeah. observing, it seems to me so strange, though, because at the very time where you might be able to create space for that discussion, and it seems a good time to have the discussion, yeah. the nostalgia that has been programmed into people by the monarchy makes it very yeah. hard to actually have that conversation. Yeah. Do you not think now, I kind of wonder if, like, over the next year, as particularly as we move towards coronation, mm. um, whether that will be more um, more open to it. I mean, even this week, so Prince, um, sorry, King Charles, I keep saying Prince Charles, King Charles um, went to Wales, because um, yeah. he was obviously used to be Prince of Wales, and he was really quite heavily booed with quite a lot of people shouting. So I just wonder if, you know, as we move away from the Queen in this moment of grief and move towards something else, whether that will open up more space globally as well, not just yeah. obviously. Yeah, Laura, I didn't yeah. realise it was Owen, is it Gwyndor Day? I never quite know how to pronounce Welsh names. But I, I didn't realise, and having, having read a bit online, that the idea that the son of the British monarch is the, the Prince of Wales is actually an incredible snub and a reminder of a power relationship to the people of Wales that goes back to, I think, the year 400, um, yeah. where they tried to rebel. And the English said, our, you know, our heir to the throne is always going to be the Prince of Wales, just to remind you that yeah. you are, you know, you're underneath us. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean... And I think that similar to Scotland, I mean, Scotland has a much lower approval rating uh, for the monarchy as well. So I think, I think we're going to start to see a split as well from England, Scotland and Wales, and then kind of all around the Commonwealth and all around the other realms as well. I think there's going to be quite interesting different responses to it. Um, and whether England will catch up with everyone else, <laughs> we'll wait to see. Um, but I mean, there's been in some interesting comment pieces from uh, countries in the Caribbean, for example, talking about kind of colonialism and whether it's time for that narrative to to the change as well now. Yeah. Look, back to the important stuff, the pomp and the ceremony and the circumstance. Uh, in general times, outlined for those of us who care, what actually happens uh, in London today? When does the funeral proper start and what does that kind of involve? So, um, in UK time, um, her coffin will leave Westminster, where it's been, um, to go towards the Abbey. I think that's about quarter to eleven. Um, and then the service is about an hour um, and then it'll be taken to Windsor Castle. So there's been quite a lot of reports on kind of where on the motorway you can stand so you can see it go past. Um, and I think there's another service mid-afternoon um, and then finally there's, there's a private family service in the evening when she'll actually be kind of laid to rest. Um, and where will she be laid arrived. to rest? It's somewhere, it's in, near Windsor Castle. It's the same place that um, Prince Philip was, so it'll be with him um, in kind of a private family tomb that's uh, near Windsor Castle. Okay, so will the Tomb of the Queen be accessible to the public in the normal course of events? You know, two years down, if you want to go and see the grave of Queen Elizabeth, will you be able to, or will it be in a private setting? I don't actually know. That's a good question. I think, I, think, I wonder if maybe there'll be kind of a, um, a headstone that is publicly available, but perhaps the actual private family tomb might not be. That's how I would imagine it is. But I don't know if that's been announced yet, actually. I don't think that's news yet. 
Look, apart for, from Beckham and a bit of booing in Wales, any other scandals of the tabloids got any fodder that they've got into? I noticed some passing mention of a whole lot of Prince Charles's staff being laid off and I think yeah. Harry and Meghan not being invited or being uninvited to some reception. Yeah, the other thing that's caused quite a stir is, um, so in the UK tomorrow we have a bank holiday for the day of the funeral, um, so today for you. Um, and we, there's been a lot of, um, for instance, NHS hospital appointments cancelled, um, so like urgent cancer treatment and things have been cancelled because it's a bank holiday. Um, so there's been quite a lot of talk about that. Um, you know, particularly our NHS is decimated, it's in, uh, near collapse. So um, there's been quite a lot of criticism of kind of those kinds of decisions as well. We're not having, believe it or not, we're having the public holiday or Queen Death Day, right. as I call it. No, no, we're having it in a week, yes. a week from now. Oh, you are? Okay. I don't know why. We are doing it. We are having a one-off holiday. It's also, strangely right, well. enough, the day that uh, the emergency measures um, for COVID-19 uh, fall into abeyance. So some people also regard it as Liberation Day uh, to a certain extent. Laura, can I ask you, because I know, and one of the reasons I love talking to you about royal stuff is that you're not, I'm sorry, one of those obsequious bootlickers, um, royal correspondents. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you been surprised or, or bemused by the level of, uh, I don't know, I, I was going to call it love, but I, I, I think that's over-interpreting it, the level mm. of emotion and, if you like, patriotism that has been displayed in, in the wake of Queen Elizabeth's death? I haven't been surprised, no, I don't think. I, th I think it was kind of inevitable. Um, I've been surprised by some, how some of its work. So, I mean, the queue has become quite the spectacle. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that was, in that, that was a surprise. But not in... No, I think the kind of the way she's been treated in her life, I think, it, it hasn't really surprised me. I think it was kind of inevitable. Um, mm. But some of the stuff around Charles maybe has surprised me a little bit. In what, um, that he's going down so well or that he's being resisted? Well, a bit of both, to be honest, in, in a weird way. So I yeah. think in lots of ways they've kind of tagged it on so it's just a continuation of the Queen and they've really... They've really got hold of that, like particularly the BBC. Yeah. Um, but there's also been real pockets, again, on social media, um, of real resistance, actually, um, in mm. a way that kind of makes you wonder what will happen over the next year. Mm. And, and, look, I just want to go um, back to it. Harry and Meghan are no longer the big story. They're not getting the sort of coverage they used to. They must be a bit... Some might say that Meghan's a bit... will be a bit peeved at that, but they are kind of a sideshow, aren't they, to the whole thing? Well, and I think that, you know, that's that's a good thing in a way. It's not, it's kind of not about them. Um, mm. And that's not dismissive, but it's not. And in a way, it's quite good that they're not all, they have, there has been some stories that have blamed Meghan for everything as they always seem to manage to do in the tabloids. Mm. Um, but there hasn't been as many of them as there usually is. So that's yeah. got to be a good thing. Well, Laura, I know an awful lot of New Zealanders, believe it or not, from 7.30 this evening, New Zealand time, the television coverage of this begins in New Zealand. And mm -hmm. I imagine that hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders are going to stay up to the wee hours watching this. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm I will sure. not be one of them. What does uh, your average English person, what does Laura Clancy do during a once-in-a-lifetime royal funeral? Are <laughs> you watching it on telly? Have you got some work to do? Or are you just going to go to the well, pub? Well, I'm, yes. I'm going to go and try and find some people to speak to on the streets. That's my plan tomorrow. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping there'll be some people around, hopefully some people who don't agree with it, fingers crossed. If there's anyone in the Manchester area who doesn't agree with it, <laughs> please come talk to me. <laughs> um, Laura, as always, uh, a good discussion. Um, I, I hope you get through it. I'm sure you'll get through it uh, fine. <laughs> and we will talk again soon. That is our... Thank uh, you very much. Thank you, Laura. That, and we're allowed to call her that now. She's, a, uh, she's written books on, on royalty. She's a working journalist from Manchester. And she is the platform. She's now officially the platform's royal correspondent in the United Kingdom, uh, Laura Laura Clancy. And and it's so nice getting people's perspectives from, from close to it. Um, but that queue is the thing, isn't it? That has become, it's funny how a story like this, the queue becomes the thing. That becomes the story. I imagine, and, and here I'm going to make a prediction, someone is going to give birth in that queue. Someone, there will be a pregnant woman in that queue somewhere and the story will emerge that someone's given birth. It'll be a kid. If it's a kid, they'll be called Elizabeth. If it's a boy, they'll be called Charles. And they'll be followed every couple of years. Someone will do a story on the kid that was born in the queue before the funeral. 
And what is going to happen when they move the body? Does the queue just disappear and if you didn't make it, you're really peeved? You're really angry? You take a swing at someone who you think might have jumped the queue? I hate queuing. I will actively not buy something I want if I have to queue for it. But the British, they just love a good queue. They can't help themselves, can they?